Welcome back. Thank you once again for hanging out with us. This is the one and only IT in the D show. I'm your host, Bob Walton Spiel, always hanging out with producer, co-host extraordinaire, Randy Walker. Guest this week, Mr. Comic-Con Ming Chen is in the house. You might know him from a shared podcast studio, podcast audio. You might know him from, uh, from AMC's comic book men. You might know him from his own podcast. Um, but we were lucky enough to be able to chat with him once again. It's been a couple. It's been about a good solid year, so we wanted to get an update. You are a traveling fool. It's good to have you on the show, bud. Hey, what's up, you guys? Uh, this is my yeah my yearly proof of life that uh, I'm still <laughs> alive and uh, that I still love you guys. And um, yeah, I, I uh, usually about this time of year I actually see you guys in person, and you know we're out tearing up the Hamtramck dive bars. And uh, over out, you know, Polonia eating city chicken. The best. And uh, yeah, but uh, I have to be in, pa- in El Paso this week. And I, I will be missing Astronomicon 7. Uh, but, you know, they know I love those guys. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wish this is the one time I wish I, would, I could clone myself and be at both at the same time. You know, and 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 I could drink twice as much, too. That only works, <laughs> though, if you can, like, remerge the clones back into one so you can have both those experiences, right? Yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, ever could go that far, I would figure that out <laughs> for sure. But I will, I will be back soon. I, the uh, the universe always takes me back to Michigan, no matter what. Dude, so, please tell me you're cool. exhausted. You have been like every you haven't missed a weekend. When's the last time you missed a weekend for a comic con? Uh, no, I actually, I actually had the last three weekends off. But um, so the the first weekend I had off, what do I do? I go to a con. Uh, there was a thing in Connecticut. It was called '90s Con. You guys would have loved it, man. So get this. Imagine walking into a, a convention center, and on your right is Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. Come on. On your left is Marissa Tomei and Mira Sorvino. And then you have, um, like, the, the two dads from my or, – and or, the, one of the dads and one of the girls from My Two Dads. Remember that that TV Absolutely. show? Absolutely. Yeah. And – um. Yeah, and just you know, yeah, people kids, people are like Saved by the Bell and like nine oh two one zero at Melrose Place. Yeah, they 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 went. They there's there's a thing that exists called nineties con, where they bring all the TV and movie stars from the nineties into one spot. I think though, uh, you know, beyond the, the the cool guests, my favorite moment. I'm going down the escalator and I look in front, and there's a kid cosplaying Vicky from Small Wonder, like uh. full on, and I was like, you win. You win, man. Yeah, yeah. If you're, you're like such a creepy show, but part of our childhoods, man. What so, was her yeah, catchphrase? Was what was her catchphrase? I can't remember. I, I watched it, all of them. I know we should know this, right? But I every time I would turn that show on, I was so creeped out that I can't even remember the stupid catchphrase. That and we watched some stupid shit like Alf. The what was the one with the uh, Harry and the Hendersons? The Bigfoot. Harry and the Henderson. The yeah. Yep, Alf with the Akmonix. Uh I mean, you know, it's yeah, that the the S and shows, but they were charming and we listen, that's all we had. Like I oh, my yeah. my parents my parents didn't spring for cable. I was stuck with three channels and PBS. So and that's the thing. There wasn't there was no choice. You like when Saved by the Bells on, you watched it. Like the cart yeah. you know, the, and that's the you know, and that's my big issue with like not my issue, but like what like just like when Justice League came out. And I'm sitting here going, that's not my Justice League. Granted, I'm not the target audience because I'm old man. Um, but like, where's Green Lantern? Where's Apache Chief? Why are you know? Well, you know, the you know. Meanwhile, the Legion of Doom, like they hinted at it, but it wasn't it. It just wasn't. Dude, if Apache Chief showed up in the Zack Snyder uh, Justice League movie, I I I, I would have been. I would have done a whole a, a 180 for sure. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing the Apache Chief movie anytime soon. I January. would watch that. I would. I would stand in line for that. Oh yeah, I. I you know I would invest in that movie. I would give him money to make that movie, but I don't think that's happening in twenty twenty four. So you want to get um, this? You want to know how how much of a loser I am in my real life right now? Um, this is how many cons I've gone to. Flash Gordon was at Toledo. Which is only like an hour and a yes, half drive. Fantastic con. Yeah, yeah, I didn't go. Yeah, fantastic con. And I didn't go. You don't want to know why? Because I have why? a Flash Gordon painting, Dave Santia painting signed by Flash Gordon. That was painted in front of Flash Gordon. I have a Jets jersey right behind me signed by Flash Gordon. Yes. Go Jets. Right. You have I the have, t-shirt. I have, you have the ringer t-shirt. I have the ringer t-shirt. I have another 
like a beautiful thing that Dennis Barger got back in the day. Um, all signed like uh movie post. Like I have everything. Like I have every figure known to man. So I'm like, if I go there, what am I going to do? What, you know, when I go do some rails at, uh, with te- with a teddy bear, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That guy, um, that I, I, I met that guy in San Antonio about 10 years ago. And the first time I met him, uh, you know, I, I wanted to take a photo with him. I was like, hey, man, my name is Ming. And he chuckled. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, can you put me in a headlock for the photo? And he was like, you really want that? I'm like, hell yeah, I want that. Like, yeah. it, it would be great. So he, so he did. And uh, you know, I had a little mini poster. I'm like, can you send this death to Ming? And he did. And then, um, yeah, well, we started seeing each other at least a couple times a year. And uh, sometimes they would ship us off to like the local TV station to do it, uh, you know, like a pre-con interview to promote the show. Right. And um, yeah, that guy's just great, man. I think my favorite Sam Jones memory was um, I was at a con, I was walking to breakfast and it was a pretty narrow hallway and walking the other way was Sam Jones and Lou Ferrigno, oh my uh, the Incredible God. Hulk. So they took up the whole hallway. So they had to make this little space for me in between them. And as I go past them, they're like, yo, Ming, man, we were at the gym. Where the hell were you? Why weren't you there? They were giving me shit for not working out. And I'm like, hey, I, I, I'm I, sorry, guys. I, I woke up late. Uh, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow morning. I called my mother once at like quarter to 11. And I go, Ma, I'm having dinner next to Barbara Eden and Lou Ferrigno. And she's like, what in the world? Where are you? Like, yeah, knee deep at yeah. Motor City Comic Con, which mean, you know means nothing to her. Um, yeah. But like, uh, yeah, we go... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, we just got weird lives, man. So, uh, you know, you, you mentioned I'm, like, literally everywhere. Uh, I think two, two and a half weeks, I'll be in Anchorage, Alaska for a con, and uh, and Sam Jones will be there. So if you need yet another thing signed or something, I'll I'll take care of it. For I don't you. mean to throw the guy under the bus. I'm sure he's a sweetheart, but I remember one con I was at, and he had ki- he had small kids, and they were literally just going up to the tables and just, like, grabbing stuff. And just like when they say, okay, give me 20 bucks, they go, my dad will sign something for you. And they were, they were doing this repeatedly. And I'm like, I'm just wondering how much shit did they possibly get away with? They just go grab, yeah. a nin- go grab a Ninja Turtle. Like, oh, my dad will, uh, my, my dad, my dad will sit. And they're like, who's your dad? And they're like, Sam Jones. They're like, these vendors are like, what are you supposed to do for that? You know? I, hey, that's currency, man. That's currency that I, I can't print my, yeah, my, I can't do that. I can't like Ming, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sign something for you in exchange for a lightsaber, like a Star Wars <laughs> right. Brock lightsaber. Don't work for me. Yeah. For him, for him, it worked. Maybe you know? that's still. Um, have you uh, have you heard of the the first time we hung out was uh, Dickweeds in Mount Clemens? Uh, yeah, when big, Fond big tiny sung "Sweet Transvestite," knew that knew it verbatim. Um, in the, this is the diviest of of like hillbilly dive bars this is pretty much yeah. the, the the pinnacle of and here you have this six eight black dude singing sweet transvestite like people thought they were on they were on mars it was so great yeah what one of the best bars at mount clemens we're by the old Tr- gibraltar trade center gone yeah it's, gone it's a, i know fond memory it's weed now it's all everything's all weed everything that closes turns to weed yeah, so we got fond memories of uh of, of us being in in uh half that building while the gun show was going on next door, <laughs> and the flea market was still going on, and uh, I remember the con was like, hey, take these vouchers, you can go eat in the snack bar at the trade center, and I, I you know, growing up in Michigan, I was in heaven, man. Zabstick, I was in heaven. I yeah. Zabstick thought we were on Pluto or something because he's like, yeah. the gun show going yeah. on now next to the comic-con i'm like it's no big deal mike and he's like no 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 and he like he couldn't comprehend the that michigan had gun shows just just on normal weekends at, at uh flea markets yeah it's funny you bring that up but I, I found this random box over at the studio and i pulled out a thing he bought at that gun show he bought a tactical vest <laughs> with all the velcro and all that and really like the, the, the straps and i'm like bro what do you what do you gotta do with that like, what are you going to take it to the comic book shop and, like, put Sharpies in it and, and like, bags and boards? Like, what? Like, t- seriously, what are you going to do with that? He's like, I, 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 you know, I might need this. And obviously he didn't because he just threw it in a box. Those aren't never, cheap either. No, it wasn't cheap. But he took it's what he spent all his con money on was was a tactical vest at the 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 gun show at the Gibraltar Trade Jeez. Center. Yeah. So I know, like, when you're in Detroit or at Astro and, like, everybody brings you Fago and Better Made and stuff. Like when you're in Anchorage, Alaska, like what's do you have a shtick when you go to like the other these you know El Paso and all that? Is it people don't know what the hell Fago and Better Made is, do they? 
No, not out there. But uh, you know, the, you know, every region's got their specialty. So I just got back. I literally just landed from Boise, Idaho, a couple hours ago, and their big thing out there. Uh, they have two big things. Uh, number one is a thing called finger steaks, and it's basically. I, you, I your mean, post. Every, I didn't know what it was. Yeah, so everyone knows what chicken fingers are. Sure. It's it's, ching, it's chicken finger in steak form, and I know it sounds weird, but it it's awesome. They're awesome. They 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 they're sort of those ranch and cocktail sauce. Oh, not I was gonna say they dipped in country gravy, kind of like country fried steak. That's what. I yeah, think. you would think, right? But they're yeah, they you know they, they're they're no depending on where you go, the 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 cuts of beef vary in quality. You know, you get the shittiest, uh, you know, yeah, crappiest yeah. sirloin, or so the higher end ones will actually use like a tenderloin, so they're you know it's not not all gristly. And um, yeah, they batter, they're battered and and rolled around in breading and deep fried. And they work. And why they haven't gotten out of Idaho is beyond me. I've never seen them anywhere else. I haven't either. Listen, at the end of the day, you could deep fry my socks and dip it in a ranch, yeah. and it would be fantastic. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, uh, you know, since it's all potatoes up there, they're, uh, so they have a lot of French fries. Uh, fry sauce is a big thing in Boise, which is basically it's ketchup and mayonnaise yeah. mixed together. So it's the sauce at All-American Burger from Fast Time. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's a specialty uh, over in Idaho. But um, even like Anchorage, uh, uh, it's all about their seafood. Uh, halibut bites oh. are, you know, if you like fish and you go to Alaska and eat halibut bites, you're like, oh, is this what fish is really supposed to taste like? Right. Because that's yeah, it's pretty eye opening. That was kind of like when we were in Lauderdale. Every single bo- every single dive bar had the best conch fritters I ever had. Yeah, and I can't find them si- like ever since. But I, like I crave those once in a while, and I know I can't get them up here. Yeah, either uh, Florida or you know, if you want to brave jumping on a cruise ship and going to the Bahamas, that's where uh, the, like the you get the divey yeah. uh, conch fritter shocks. Yeah, that's where it gets. Did you hear what Detroit got? Uh, a Jolly Bee. I don't know if you're a fan. Wait, what? I I I mean, I'm Asian, dude. If I I'd yeah. be cast out of uh, my people if I didn't like Jolly Bee. I I saw. It, I, didn't you go? You posted a yeah. review. Yeah, and you're yeah. like you're like meh. You're like, <laughs> you're, it was meh. And I dirty. think I think you got. The, did you get the fried chicken? And what did you get? So I got the. Chi- so I, I have to point out that it's directly across from the Golden Butthole of uh, of Sterling Heights. So it's uh it's, it has a beautiful view of the Golden Butthole up on that um, hellscape that is Hall Road. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I got the chicken sandwich. I got the fries. I got the mango pie, and I had the pineapple drink. Um, the chicken sandwich yeah. was mid. Yeah. It was it was yeah. And I hate to use the word mid because I'm fifty. Um, right. It wasn't good. I, the McDonald's one is just it's better almost. The fries were, were the worst fries of any fast food place I've ever been to. It's worse than okay. Kentucky. They're like Kentucky Fried Chicken fries. Not right. not the good wedges. I'm talking the shitty fries. Yeah, there was there an afterthought. Yes. Yeah, the mango pie, whatever, fine. It's a McDonald's apple pie with mango in it. And the pineapple drink was like if you open up a can of pineapples and your mom's let you drink the juice when she takes a pineapple, yeah. it was right. that with ice. And I was yeah, just like, so, ah. Yeah, so where you went wrong was uh, it's all about the weird spaghetti there at Jollibee. It's made with this like banana flavored like tomato sauce. It's sweet. And that's that's apparent. That's the thing to get at Jolly Bee. See, when so, I went to yeah. Ireland, I had the English slash Irish breakfast, and the beans yeah. was a thing. And I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm going to eat them. And I dove in, and it's like pork and beans in spaghettio sauce. And I'm like, this is trash. Like, but it's it's everyone that I've been talking to about Jolly Bee. It's a nostalgia thing. Like, if you grew up, or if you're Filipino, yeah. or if like that's your, you know, you grew up with it. But like Michigan's never had it. And uh, four hour wait the first weekend. Now there's nothing. It's it's right. Yeah, the secret got out. I was like, all right, this food is not that good. Yeah. So well, and it's yeah. right next to a Portillo's, and Hall Road is like the chain hell of the planet. There's yeah. you name it. There's one. There's one on each end of Hall Road. Yeah. Um. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, guys like us know better, man. We'll 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 roll over to the town. You know, the the um, you know, the the, the hamburger joint at four in the morning. And uh, get a sack full of burgers, man. Telway doesn't Nothing. have the you can't eat inside anymore. Yeah, I know. I, I, and you know, there's something fun about sitting like waiting for an order outside in 30 degree weather at four in the morning, which is what what I did. And oh, I geez, it just it just sparked a memory. So we we went to we we you know we went out drinking, went to Telway, got the burgers at four in the morning, ate them, and then I I was like, oh crap, did I agree to do a 
a Channel 4 morning interview at 6.30. It's like, oh, crap, I did, didn't I? So, yeah. I was with I you I, until about 2 that night. <laughs> you were. Yeah. You were. Yeah. So, I yeah, I had to get myself together. I think I set an alarm at it. 6. I made it, but I literally, I reeked like like onions, like steamed onions or whatever they have at yeah. Telway. And um, I, yeah, but you could tell my eyes are bloodshot. I'm bleary, bleary. But uh, I posted that interview on all my social media. Everyone's like, wow, you did a really good job. Like, I thought you were really great. So maybe that's a secret. Did you, uh, you remember the pizza place that was in front of our podcast studio? Yes, I do. Plot yes. for the pizza. They took over yes. the podcast studio. They renovated. I heard. Did you see Portnoy was there from Barstool? I did not. What did he, how many, what did he give? Him? It was Detroit style. So he went eh, Detroit style. He, I think he gave him a seven, nine, which is still respectable. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah well, Hey man, that, that pizza ain't going to flop. So, you know, there's no, there's no flop yeah. in that. So yeah, you, you gotta give it, you gotta score that. He doesn't, I don't know what it is. Him and he doesn't like the Detroit Freddy's. He gave like a eight. Did you have Freddy's when you were here? Did I take you there? No, I never had Freddy's it's down river a bit. It's like an hour drive from my house in Rochester. Um, he gave them like an eight, seven, eight, eight. So like wow. you can't get in there anymore. It's it like they ruined the business. Like when I was, here's a crazy story. So Palazzo to pizza, right? The one that's in the podcast studio, Yep. the Korean Dave Portnoy stopped in and it's, he's got like 10 times more viewership than Barstool does. Yeah. And like now the, the guy we we're talking to him is now, obviously we've been friends for a while. He's like, I got 35 orders waiting for me when I open and he goes and probably wow. 30 of them are Korean people. He goes this yeah, the yeah, yeah. This show and uh, as we're sitting in there, there was eight, nine, they'd come in, you know, you know, going nuts over this guy's pizza. So I'm like, Hey, good for you, man. Whatever, whatever exposure you can get. Shoot. I should try. I should uh, boot like the Chinese version. Then the Chinese, uh, you know, barstool pizza. Uh, what do it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I should do it. I, and yeah, I should. Dude, for free pizza. That, well, here's the thing. Your stick is good good cup of coffee, a shitty yeah. dive bar. Right. And a and like really good eats in like rando places. That's like so like, dude, I just own that. Dude, dude, yeah. you know, start me because here's the thing. Me and I, I joke with Randy, I'll, not joke, but I tell him, Randy, I want to start doing uh reels for the show and grab little grab minute long clips and I never do it. Um but if you're already out yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know why? Because it's work. It's work. You I even, I even bought Opus together. One that does AI clips based on what it thinks will be, you know. I'm not I didn't I haven't logged into it since, you know. It's one of those I, things. I, I think we're I think we're so weird, like the AI can't can't pull out our, our best stuff, man. You know, because we're just too good. We're too good. It, you're too good. You speak for yourself. Yeah, I guess so. I, we're gonna have to wait till uh, like Judgment Day, and then it'll, that's that's when it all comes together. Well, we thought it was today at three fifteen, but nothing happened. So I was uh, <laughs> where uh, did were you were, were you guys able to see it um in 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 Michigan? I sat on my port. My buddies went to Toledo. A couple of buddies of mine. Um, I sat up on a roof downtown and looked at it. Yeah, I, I was on my porch. Um, my favorite is a um, meme that I couldn't stop posting everywhere. Everybody's probably tired of me saying, I'm not impressed by a two minute eclipse. This one time Kid Rock didn't see the sun for three damn days. And I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't stop laughing at that. Um, then there's yeah. the, the Death Star memes going on. You know, there's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know what I am with these situations? I'm Clark Griswold in the very first vacation at the Grand Canyon. Not three times going, all right, let's get the F out of here. Like that's, uh, yeah. I don't, it doesn't do nothing. You know, I know there's people that love that. I, hear I don't you. want to I, take um, it from them, but you know. Yeah, I was, uh, I was in flight. So it was actually pretty cool from the sky. Um, but uh, yeah, my, yeah, my wife drove all the way to uh, Columbus, Ohio from Jersey. Uh, she had gone, I guess, what was it? 2013. The last time this happened. Uh, she took the kids and went to like North Carolina, and uh, yeah, she said it was like mind blowing, like to see it on the ground. Like, uh, she went and followed like where it was, you know, the totality. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah. So I, I, I haven't done that, so I can't say it either way. But I, I say I got the cooler experience, man. I got to see it from thirty thousand. That is kind of a cool. Well, the flights out of Austin, I guess, were bananas because like there was like they they had a thousand dollar flight on the path of totality, whatever they called it. Yeah. And uh, so like yeah, I have friends in Austin. They're like, dude, the everybody's nuts in this town trying to get on this flight yeah but doesn't it just feel like you're flying in like at night 
Like I, I yeah, I didn't get what's so special about that. So. I don't know. Like yeah. you know, the pictures and the videos, you know what it reminds me of? Like the fourth of July, like you know, like what are you gonna like you know, like <laughs> yeah, how many how many can you yeah, how many can you see? Well, and look at my fireworks from 2014. Isn't this awesome? Yeah. Said no one ever. Um right. so I need to I need to rant with you. Um Okay. I know we I know rant away. I know we're both um kind of movie and sci fi and eighties junkies and nineties junkies. No. Um, and I talked about the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life, which uh, is which is the new Roadhouse. <laughs> and I and it's I'll yeah. give a, it's spoiler alert city because now at this point it's been about a month and if you haven't seen it you know you probably will never see it. Um, conceptually, like the first one was silly, it was campy and it was corny. Like good old Brad Wesley wants to take down the double deuce and you know and own the town and. So this one, they made it where the, there was a developer that wanted a block on Key West and he bought everything around but this bar that this woman's family's owned since the 60s. And she didn't want to sell. So like you'd send in biker gangs. So this woman goes to this underground pit fighting and finds a MMA guy, Jake Gyllenhaal, who killed yeah. somebody in the ring and got fired from UFC. And now yeah. he's doing pit fighting and she offers him 20 grand to clean up the bar I, I, I and then they would so so it's the it's a plot of every 80s like action show on nbc it was uh, like more, that was the, that was every isn't that every 18 plot was, where like a, someone wants to yeah. move in and then they get the the people the old people who own whatever building yeah. or, or whatever piece of land gets intimidated by a, either a biker gang or some toughs that they hire and then they they find Hannibal in the gang and Mr. T and Holly Man Murdoch and then they they build some kind of contraption and they beat in, and they fend them off. But this it sounds is, like the plot of it, yeah. It, it totally was, but it was lazy. It's like it's still his, his same name. His name's Dalton. He falls in love with the nurse that stitches him up. He befriends a local shop that gets burned down by the bad guys. He, he likes coffee, but they have Cuban blend because they're in Key West. Yes, and it's like. And there's a band playing that's you know better than they should be for a Key West band, right? I my, my only question is is why? Like, did they did they think it was gonna be so big that they would launch a franchise of Roadhouses or like why? I think some yeah. sniff took a big whiff of glue and said, "I bet you we can get somebody to fund this shit." And someone said, "Okay." The, yeah. Like the it was like I'll, so I'll give you an example of how I feel about like remakes and universe redos. Like okay, Mad Max completely one hundred percent legit, right? Yes. What, Fury Road, especially the tie-in with Toe Cutter being the same guy from the seventy nine one. Going wait, is yep. that still him, or do they just use the same actor? And it's you know it's an extension of the universe. It's proper. Yeah. But if you do redo RoboCop like they did in what fourteen, um, this crap. Like, why, why, like Ghostbusters tried it and then they thought about it again and then came out with, like, all right, we're going to do it as an extension. And then they were fine. Yeah. The Paul Rudd yeah. Ghostbusters are fine. Yeah. But like, why couldn't you make, like, I don't even know how you would extend the universe for Roadhouse. Like, it just, it's such a dumb concept, right. anyway, especially nowadays. Oh, Bounce yeah. is going to save the town. Like, what? Um, and then McGregor was probably the worst acting job. It's like, okay, speaking of doing a rail, do 10 rails, Connor, and just walk around and then walk around with your pants off for a portion too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That'll, that'll sell it. That'll get them. It was so bad. Like, and these guys are all like Deadpool. Like he gets stabbed in the stomach or on the, in like in the kidneys with a screwdriver up to the handle and he just walks it off. Yeah, he's fine. Just rub some dirt on it. You'll just be fine. Watch the one. Like, okay, uh, Wolverine, just watch it heal. Um, yeah. Anyway, I. I yeah, I, it's funny. Um, yeah, yeah. So wait, we were, we were talking about um, another movie they remade. Uh, roll. I, I don't know if you guys remember uh, Rollerball from the seventies. Fantastic or whatever, movie. Which, James Cunn, and they they remade it in what the two thousands with Chris Klein yeah, from American yeah. Pie, and LL um, cool I think yeah, LL Cool J is in it. Paul I, but I'm like. Yeah, I'm like, why would you? Why one? Nobody likes roller derby. Like, see, it, you know, I love, I love that movie. The only bad part was the chant. <laughs> so they're in like they're in Russia, right? And right, uh, Klein's character's name is Jonathan, whatever. And the whole crowd is just going, and they start slow, like Jonathan, 
Jonathan, Jonathan. And then it gets all rowdy. And I'm like, that hands down the worst, like that ruined the whole movie for me. Yeah, I, I remember they're trying to start up like a, a, a roller derby, like late night league. And uh, there it was supposed to be a, a, a competitor to American Gladiators back in the day. Oh, God. And, and uh, you know, everyone was banking on the, the, it was called roller games, I think. It was supposed to be, they're like, this is really violent. Like, the, the, we were pushing the envelope and nobody cared. You know, why? Because people skating in a circle. And then Pickleball nobody. made it. Go figure. Yeah, I know. Pickleball made it. Pickleball made it because you know, old people can play it. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Did you see, oh, I thought Aquaman Lost Kingdom was the worst movie of all time. Did you see Wow, it? you're just you're just going well, you're just going from bad to worse. You, I I did not see it. And you know, not that I didn't want to. I just my time is limited, man. I figured I figured out, out planes are in the hotel late at night. Um, there was a scene. You have to watch it for this one scene. Okay. And the blonde guy from Watchmen, who was his brother, um, yeah. you know, he's in the movie and he gives this speech about the lost kingdom. And it re- it looks like a cannonball run, like the blooper reel at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah, with and Dom it, DeLuise. And there's like, like the cast is laughing their ass off while he's saying this, and he's like holding back this smirk, like he's he's gonna crack immediately. And they kept it in the movie. Yeah, and that's like, awesome. All right, that I, I now I'm gonna watch it. And Momoa, I gotta watch it for that. And Momo is doing these like Nick Cage like karate moves, like da, and it was just. They had to have been laughing and just like, I'm going to cash this check, baby. Let's go. And yeah, let's just get this over with. And then, uh, you know, and then we'll, we'll cut all Amber Heard's parts or whatever. And we'll put, we'll throw it out there. (laughs) But like, did she, did she poop on anything? Yeah. In the water, just like a fish. Um, yeah. Like there was, there was parts of it that made like Batman 67 look like it was good CGI. It made Flash (laughs) Gordon. It made Flash Gordon look like, like like the new star wars like right right <laughs> and like what do you, like are you guys trying to do this poor like the story was horrific no i love that we're going backwards now you know we have all the resources in the world to make everything awesome now and and no and they're, they're consciously trying to make it to, to make it move backwards i know right? why i'm gonna throw out this is my this is my theory but they they say it in plain sight they interviewed all the directors and writers of the last like pick the last 12 comic movies and every one of them never read or comic or watched a show or was a fanboy. Yeah. Like there was no Kevin Smith's. There was no Dave Filoni's. There was no yeah. like, yeah. Like J- James Gunn, like no right, like yeah. people that no, no, no John Favreau's. Yeah. No, like you're right. The people that were like lived and breathed and like still at 50 years old, collect justice league lunch boxes. Like yeah. people I know me. Um, but like, I think that's a huge part of it. Like it's one thing to make a good, what do they say is the thing? It's like, he's a good fighter or he fights good. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're getting people that make good movies, but they're not, it's just, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. They're not fighters though. Yeah. And I make it well known that I didn't read a lot of the comics, but I watched everything humanly possible from cartoon to like, I, I just binged bad, bad batch this last weekend. Like I'm not yeah, I'm great. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's so great. Good. It's so good. And uh, not only that, like the same guy does all the voices, which is pretty cool. Uh, D. Bradley Baker. You know what I'm mad about? Man. What are you mad about? They justified Palpat. Somehow Palpatine returned. They they made it not be stupid. Um, it's the I whole don't know point you, of the you, show, you know, apparently. What's that? It's the whole point of the show, apparently, is to fix that mess up. To fix it, right? The whole series was just to fix that. Um, what was it Project Necromancer, Randy? And that's all they t- like. They had Omega, yeah. which is Boba Fett's, you know, twin clone. Yeah, and the, you know it's fantastic, but like they did it all just to fix the stupid. Like I guess Rogue One was the whole movie was made to fix a plot hole, so I guess why not do a whole cartoon series? Yep. Yeah, why? Because they can. Right? Did you see Acolyte? Uh, the trailer? I have not seen it yet. Um, I heard, I saw the complaints about it. Does people, that count? People will complain. Like I have a thing now. Like I'm a wrestling fan. WrestleMania was the last three week. Three. Yeah, I am. I am. Everyone's online complain. I'm I'm convinced. That you could hand people free beer and they're gonna go, oh, this you don't have anything like my brand, like people, like especially online. It's yeah. so stupid. It's so stupid. Like, what do you want? Like, I I think that stems from what I was saying before. You know, when we grew up, we had three channels, right? Yeah. And you you had to like it. Now we've we're given too much. 
we're giving too much. And now, you know, people are like, oh, well, that, that, this sucks. Like, can't somebody do it better? Like, I'll, I'll just flip to another channel. And, um, yeah, nobody appreciates anything like anymore. This, so. this wrestling thing, they're like, oh, why did Cody have to win? Why did he, what Roman should have won? And I'm like, do you, do you leave like Beekeeper and go, you know, it'd be awesome if Jason Statham died at the end and the bad guy won? And no, you do enjoy the damn movie. That's a fantastic movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, Beekeeper. Um, fantastic job they like yeah it's john wick basically with jason statham it's it's yeah it's I, I like anything statham's in so do we. As a, yeah that guy, yeah that guy's a, he's yeah you guys a genius man and he can and he kick he's really good at kicking people in the head yes in the in the end that's all i want so what um you listen to any podcasts at all i know you said you don't have much time uh i've been uh i yeah um i um I, I got cued into uh a thing i i never i had never heard of I, back in 2018 uh, some guy was just leaving uh, package bombs on random doorsteps, and um, and you know a bunch of people got killed. It was something I'd never heard of. I don't know why this never. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, this guy. He was putting pipe bombs into cardboard boxes, leaving them on people's doorsteps. Either, and people were oh, yeah, and uh, you know it just randomly. And so uh, I I've been hitting up, and of course there are fifty seven podcasts about. Um, what what happened recapping it so i've been going back and listening to literally all of them oh my for whatever God. reason yeah yeah it was just some dude who was mad at the world and he he i mean spoiler alert they ended up cornering him and he was driving around in a van and he blew himself up so they never and um figured out why he left he left one last video outlining each one of the bombs he built like how he did it but he never really said why and they were re- they won't release the video because they, they're afraid of copycats because he legit outlined every step on how, and um, he didn't just build one bomb. He built like five different ones. Um, there was one that had a trip wire, and one was like in PVC, and one was in, in like galvanized steel. And he used different, you know, he filled them with different projectiles. And um, yeah, they never found out truly why he did it, though. Dude, are you old enough to uh, had a copy of the Anarchist Cookbook? Uh, I never bought one, but I, 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 I'm aware of it. I've seen it, and um, yeah, I mean. You know, I, for legal I, you know, purposes, I, I, I don't I, own a copy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, I I, I remember being back like you know, as a high school kid, that was kind of you know like all emo with the world. I was like, hey, maybe I should check that thing out, man. We had um on my three hundred baud modem, I had a copy, a digital copy of it. Wow. Um, yeah, it's what I'm saying. Like, when you say like making pipe bombs, I'm like just got to reference the uh, I you know obviously I don't own it anymore because my Commodore sixty four is no longer in service, thankfully. <laughs> um, but um i'm uh i'm stuck on stand-ups right now like comics uh their podcasts um so it's like andrew schultz dan soder shane gillis i'm addicted i think i think shane gillis is one of the funniest people going right now like because yeah. it's so like he's not trying to be funny he almost surprises himself with the shit coming out of his mouth right. and he like laughs at himself i don't know there's there's something endearing about it i those guys are the, schultz is like Schultz is the only person I've ever met that can trash on every single culture and race on the planet and make it where it's funny and not like it, there's zero mean spirit coming out of it at all. Yeah, that's what I want to do, man. Um, have you ever tried it? You ever tried stand up? No, I would be awful. I would either I would either do like danger field lines or I would do shit that I've heard over the years that I'm like, I make it mine and then. I did the one. Um, I told the I was at Go Comedy Improv. Did you have you seen this? I um I got on. It was a theme of the night, and everybody called me going, "Oh my god, you need to do this!" And it was storytelling. It was kind of like um, what's the one Ari Shafir that's at the strip club? This is not happening. I think it's called the YouTube yeah. series. You basically tell a story, but it's in comedic format. And I told the story on how I shit my pants on a date. Um, and <laughs> it's at the end of a three hour show. Mm-hmm. And they they publish it on YouTube, not as the entire show, but as me with my spelling. I'm the only one in the U.S. Wow! So if you Google my name, the TED Talk comes up first, right? And a shit my pants on a date comes up second. Okay. Oh man, I'm gonna definitely check that one. So out. my daughter is uh, her friend, <laughs> is, like worked at Go Comedy Improv, and he comes over and he's like, shakes my hand. He's like. Mr. Walton Shapiro, he goes, you're a goddamn legend. And I go, of what? And he goes, you know, your, your thing at Go Comedy Improv. I go, what, what, what? You Googled my daughter and that came up. Like, I go, Gretchen, you're cursed. Like, my kids, yeah. you know. 
Um, yeah. Well, hey, man, you you affected people. I know. Uh, I, yeah, I I I almost saw you shit your pants once. We were at a Chinese restaurant in Monroe, and then we went to a dive bar, and um, yeah, the the Chinese food kind of hit you. That was in uh, in a not so good way, and you had to yeah you you had to you had to take a dump in a dive bar bathroom. And it, is, and you guys didn't watch the door, and an old man walked in on me. <laughs> we told him <laughs> we told him you were in there, and he still opened the door. We did. He didn't care. He didn't care. He didn't care. That was the night where Kelly Kelly from wrestling. Mm-hmm. Is sitting with Barbie Blank is sitting like three yep. feet away from me, and I r- did not want to talk to her because I was farting like yes. every thirty seconds. I was sitting there just pounding Jagermeister, not for fun, but to make my stomach feel better. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. yeah. That's uh, we're, uh, we almost got in a fight for the because we took the jukebox over. We did. Yeah, the locals uh, did not appreciate your your taste in music. No, Randy's taste in music. Randy's taste. It was me. It was yeah. Randy's. It fault. was me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to a, let's go to a hillbilly bar and repeat. I'm a Barbie girl, eighteen yes. times, and figure. Uh, um, I did find something yesterday. I I uh, I'm proud of myself. Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. Are you familiar with his work? Uh, absolutely, Spanish Flea. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yes, of course. There's Tijuana a song Taxi, called of Rise. Course. There's a song called Rise. Okay, I've never listened to it before. The other night, I saw it on a one of those sampling uh, Instagram channels. Yeah. And it is um if you fast forward to three minutes and twenty four seconds into the rise, it is uh one of the most f- uh famous rap songs that's ever been made. Wow, really? All right. Herb Albert, I think I, I'm tr- I'm firmly convinced that Herb Albert and the T One Brass are the center of the universe. They are. They I think all good things start with them. See now that was the one thing we used to always uh, I never understood why Zorba the Greek and Hava Nagila Hava were like hockey anthems. Yeah, like like that was my favorite because we would play Zorba the Greek all the time on uh, jukeboxes, and like it took like six minutes to fire up to the hockey part, and then when the hockey part fired up, the whole bar would start clapping because they're yeah. used to doing it at the Joe. Um, yeah, those are good times. Yeah, really good times. Uh, I tried stand up once. I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, my friend Holly was hosting. And uh, I'd gone a couple of times, and I and I was kind of like, you know what? Next time I come, I'm going to do it. I'll jump up there. I'll do it. And uh, and uh, I did. It's all on YouTube. My friend videoed it, and it's like it's not it's not awesome. It you know it was my first time. It's not terrible though. Did not you write terrible. it? Did you write a bit or? Uh, I so what had happened was uh I, I guess I'll rewind a little bit. Um, I was at Kevin Smith's film festival. It was the Smod Castle Film Festival. Uh, I met a dude. A filmmaker there, uh, he and you know we went out, we we became friends. We went out drinking. He's like, "Hey man, I'm I'm shooting a movie in Albuquerque in four months. I have a one day role as an Asian mob boss. Would you be interested?" Yeah, I'm like, "Hell yeah!" This is a role I was born to play, man. And yeah, all of a sudden, four months later, I'm on a plane to Albuquerque, and so that day, you know, there's a lot of setups and stuff. We, we shot all day, but you know, while I was waiting around, that's when I started writing jokes. So I had, and, uh, you know, they give you five minutes. So I, I came up with, I thought was a pretty f- solid five minutes worth of material. And, um, and we wrapped that day and, and I got down there and I was like, Hey, I'm going to sign up. She's like, cool, cool. Well, 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 I'll put you in like fifth. I was like, all right. And, uh, the guy who's, who started it off was horrible. And so it gave me an even more confidence. I, I, as I got, I, I could be better than that guy. Like anybody could be better than that guy. So yeah, I jumped up and did it. And, um, you know, like the open mic, you can you can have your notebook. You have your notes yeah, in yeah. front of you. Nobody cares. Yeah, you don't have to memorize your set. So I was like, all right, that made it a lot easier. And I I, I did get nervous. So before I went up, my friend Chris was like, oh, five minutes. It's going to feel like forever up there, man. Are you ready? And I was like, oh, man, really? But uh, I, I felt it was the opposite. I, I couldn't even get through all my jokes. It went so fast. Are you on the and, uh, Matt um, Reif uh, bandwagon? I, you know, he's he's all right. You know, I'm not. I don't think he's the greatest thing, you know, because we're we're old dudes, man. We're we're always like, no, man, no one's better than Carlin, no, Rock, Chris Rock, you know, you know those guys. But see, now my so, thing is, I'm always a fan of there's like there's talk shows I listen to just because how they speak, not necessarily their message, right? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt Rife with the crowd work, I think he's as good as literally anyone I've like. He is like a solid nine and a half out of ten on the crowd work. I've never seen yeah, anybody yeah, yeah. that good. Um, yeah. so I joke some the problem is like his last stand up he like he vented like some anger or something cuz like uh, you know here's the thing when you have a show where 
you know, your audience is 80% women simping for you. Like you're going to get some guy haters. It's just the nature of the beast. So like yep. catch his shit from everywhere. Yeah. And it's like, he didn't, yeah. he forgot. I think he for, he's forgetting who he, how he got there. It, it happens. It yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah. Stay humble. Everybody stay yeah. humble. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, that, uh, the Albuquerque standup is also on YouTube. If you, if anyone's really bored, um, so a few months later, a uh, month later, I did a I did a podcast with uh, Jim Norton. He's um, fantastic. Yeah, and uh, you know, after we wrapped, uh, yeah, I was like, "Hey, man, um, I did my first stand up." He's like, "Really?" He's like, "How'd it go?" I was like, "You know, it wasn't great." But um, he was like, "Oh man, did you record it?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, my friend did." Why? He's like, "Oh man, I would I would give anything if I I could have my first my very first stand up recorded." He's like, "You should put that up on YouTube. You should put it up there just sure. so there's a record of it." And I was like, "All right, if Jim Norton tells me to do it." And you know he's Jim Norton. Monster I'm Rain. Do Monster it. Rain's one of the best. See now, I didn't. Uh, I liked Lucky Louie. I don't know if you ever watched that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was great in that. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I I saw him at the Fillmore. I think in Detroit. I've seen him like two or three times live. Yeah. Uh, every time. yeah. So uh, yeah. So I haven't jumped up on stage again since. But I don't know, man. I, I it's fun. I'll do it for fun, See, but uh, the problem is when you jump up there, people are going to imma- immediately start ripping you apart, though. That's the only... Yeah. You know. Well, unless you start shitting on yourself first. Like, I think once you, like... Right. You, do, you know, um, the guys, like, the what are the battles where, like, one of them's got, like, one's handicapped and one's, like, super fat, and they both, like, shit on each other, and, like, you're like, oh, my God. But they're all in on it, and they're laughing. I mean, that's yeah. the whole point. I don't know. To me, I've watched so much stand-up comedy in my life. Like half hour comedy hour was like yep. my favorite show on the planet on MTV. Yeah. When MTV was MTV. Um, I've watched so much. I don't know what would be my own material or what did I hear somewhere else? Okay. Right. Right. And then that, yeah, that's a contrary. It was like, oh man, you stole my joke. I'm like, no, I didn't. Or wait, did I? Right. I don't know. <laughs> the last thing you want to yeah. be is a Carlos Mencia, right? Like, yeah, it's so hard to be original. Like that's what, like, even like, Unless you're so good, like Dan Soder is so good at like the, his Macho Man bit. That's where I first found out. My buddy's like, "You got to hear this." I was crying, so then I just started backtracking all of his stuff, and he's so yeah. good. Um, Schultz got me during quarantine. Did you see those those uh, five minute like you just shitting on society and like no, a chair boy. with? It was almost like an SNL news bit, right? And it, but it was him just, and he's so good at how he his delivery and what what he talks about. That's awesome. Yeah, I think the other thing that made me jump up was uh, every so often uh, Brian, O'H- Brian O'Halloran, who played Dante and Clerks, yeah. will do stand-up. Uh, I remember he was at a, at a con, and the, they set aside a whole night for him. I'm like, how long did you go for? It was like, oh, we gave him 45 minutes. I was like, you gave that guy 45 minutes? Right. And um, he, claims he, he, he claims he killed it, but and I haven't seen it, and I don't know if I believe him or not. But, 45 that's like you're a pro you've been practicing all over the country like that's hard work right yeah and then um uh, a guy I recently became friends with and uh, he started doing stand-up comedy uh sean canaan who played mike barnes in karate kid 3 oh okay. bad boy of karate yeah he uh, i met him at a con and then um he was like hey i'm doing i'm doing a a, a, a whole a comedy show in atlantic city i'll put you on the list I was like, crap, man, we got to go see this. So I grabbed a friend and we went down there. And yeah, he was good. See, now me, good. me, I'm, I, I know I'm situationally funny and I'm good at like quick clapbacks. Yeah. It doesn't translate to stand up. That's why I'm like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm a good storyteller. I've always, that's always been kind of my thing, but it yeah. doesn't necessarily translate to stand up. Um, no, I think that was, and that was my problem. I tried to drag these jokes out too long as if we were podcasting. Right, I was like, dude, right, right. I was like, dude, you got to get to a way quicker, dumbass. Like you can't, you can't drag it out for like 30 seconds or a minute. You got to get to it quicker. So, uh, but yeah, that's why we we jump up there, right? You learn. So we, uh, we should go do one one day. I would love to do. I have, I have a way. opening bit, but I don't know how to follow it up. Okay. And it's, it's, it's I wrote this. And it's based okay. on my life. It's yeah. So the first, it's like, um, basically, it starts off like, who's on a first date fart hold, and you're basically talking about like these guys meet the meet the group, you know, meet the person of their dreams, and they're like, I'm never farting in front of them as long as a, you know, and it kind of goes on this bit where like, you know, the girl does it first, and the guy's appalled, and you know what I mean. But then he's like, all right, you know, the floodgates are open, baby, you know. So it's kind of this. I kind of go on, you know. But again, it's not, you know. 
Uh, so you're telling me if Kelly Kelly had caught one, like it would have been a match made in heaven. Then it would have been a match that, made in heaven. at that bar. I didn't. So I had an in with her and everything because uh, she she Rhino. We were in Monroe and Rhino lives there. Yep. And he has a marina yep. there. And I was gonna go. I want to go talk to her, but I go if I go talk to her, I'm gonna get freaking nervous stomach, like right. flipping records. I used to get that all the time. We talked about that like we every every you know I used to DJ back in the day, and we'd go to the record store on Saturday mornings. I would flip three and I have to run to the bathroom. Yeah. Like it's Martin's a noble disease. I heard people, some people have it. So like yeah. I go, if I say two words to her, I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. Right. Well, you know, she's still out there. You'll get your chance. Yeah. She did. I, uh, I, I follow her on Instagram. She had, she got married and had a baby. So am I, I'm married with kids. So like, what am I taught? What am I worried about? <laughs> you know, you can, you, uh, one, one can always dream, right? Yeah, exactly. You can always, yeah. one can always dream. Well, I, I, I well, it's great. It's like I keep running into Trish Stratus at cons, and she's smart, man. Like not only is she, is she a, a, an incredible human being and like otherworldly gorgeous, but she gets it, man. Like every dude who comes up to her table at, at, or me, like by the time you leave there, I was like, man, I think, I think she, I think she's into me. <laughs> like she, she's so smart. And then so these guys, you know, they'll line up like ten times to go see her just for that experience. I man. hate. I get really not that I'm protective of her per se, but I know guys who haven't touched a booby for free in their entire lifetimes right. that will have this opportunity to meet a Trish Stratus, pay right. her forty dollars for an autograph or whatever she charges, and they will do that death grip on the on their her opposite hip and pull a right. pull her in, and you could yeah, see his yeah. hand and you could see her squirming. There's guys are in this being in the you know around the wrestling biz for a while you see these guys yeah and you just want to just like god bless you trish for letting these freaking clowns do that <laughs> but like you know do be be keanu reeves don't stop doing right. it to girls like yeah uh, hover hand that yeah although she she'll she'll sever your hand man you you might lose that hand if you try seriously. that so uh, so i don't recommend it i don't recommend it but uh yeah all right um, but yeah she she, yeah, Tr anyway, yeah. All, there's all to say. Trish Stratus is awesome. So she was like, I remember that. Yeah, when we, I sat with you at Astro, I was in yeah. your booth. She's the booth yeah. next to you. I just watched her interact with people, and like, you can't, you can't teach that. She was so good no. with people, so good. Yeah, you know why? It's because she's Canadian, man. Is that what it Canada, is? Um, yeah, it's a, oh, it's part of it. It's definitely part of. You it have catch sure. yeah. one bag of ketchup chips, and you just become absolutely uh, apologetic and nice. Yeah, I remember she had such a huge line. I remember uh, Jeff Anderson who plays Rando and Clerks. He was there. He thought it was my line, oh. and he got out. He started getting mad. He's like, "Why the hell is Ming got a line yeah. ten times bigger than ours?" And and finally, somebody was like, "Um, that's not his line. That's Trish. That's uh, Trisha's line." He's like, "Oh." Then he wasn't mad anymore. So hey, we're gonna cut you loose, man. We uh, I can't thank you enough for the time spent with us. We I could talk to you till four in the morning, but um, I know right stuff going yeah. on, and uh, yeah, you're gonna be. Well, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'll be in El Paso next week, but you know, all my love to Astronomicon. Um, you know that I I, you know, I I've been there since since year one, um, and you know I just we have such incredible times there. So it does bum me out that I'm not there. But uh, so if you're in Michigan, please go to Burton Manor and support them. And uh, I'll be back for version eight. You know, come hell or high water, and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to be back in Michigan again, man. Just. You shout out to you know Polonia and whiskey in the jar and you know, all our uh your, you know, your picture on the wall. Our picture is still on the wall. Our picture, fine. Our picture, all three of us are on there. Like it's a big point of pride too, man. I, I tell everyone I'm there. I'm like my picture is the wall, and I'm like I act all like I. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, I, I don't even live there. They they let me ban the bar and pour my own drinks now. Like that's a pretty that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. oh, I, also. If if you go out in the patio on the side in Sharpie, it still says Mike Zapsic eats ass on the on I thought the that was in the, the bathroom building. and it's gone. It's still there. Uh I don't know if it's still in the bathroom, but it's definitely still on the side wall. Oh, they have not God. covered it I up. Yet, I'll so. take a picture. I'll be there this weekend. Oh yeah, okay. It's it should still be there. It was there a, a, a year ago, so oh, my. and it was written there the previous year. So yeah. You gotta try to come in for Poonchi Day too. That's the best party in Detroit. I every year, yeah, every year is something coincides with that and i'm like but i i want to do that and you know i hear people fill them with vodka and, and yeah dude they cut them in quarters and then they soak them in vanilla vodka oh my goodness okay done yeah yeah it's a yeah man 
yeah. So yeah, if you guys are heading over, you know, I, I'm gonna miss you guys, but I'll I'll be back soon. All right, cool. Well, we miss you, man. Ming Chen. Uh, find him online if you want to follow. It's one of the better follows on social media, just because of the cool places you go to. You should uh, you should start making reels, man. It'll be a thing. It could be a thing. Um, uh, yeah. If I wasn't so lazy, yeah. I will, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, but hey, we're gonna wrap. Yeah, but- we're gonna wrap things up this episode of the IT and the D show on behalf of Bob and Randy. Do us all a favor: drink up your drinks, get your phone numbers. You don't gotta go home. You just gotta get the hell out of here. See you next week. Drive careful. Beat it.